Sitting a game and a half above the SGA Thunder atop the Western Conference, the breakout Timberwolves continue to make the NBA physically bigger. Having won an NBA third act of most four games consecutively, only behind the Mavericks and Celtics in terms of wins in a row, as of this All-Star break recording, Minnesota resembles a matchup nightmare for any potential playoff opponent. However, the volume of Minnesota wins is far from the primary reason as to why this basketball team should have your attention, no matter which franchise your loyalties lay with. It's the uniqueness of how the Wolves are winning games in the modern NBA, which is most refreshing and impressive about this number one seed. In what's been a decade of basketball controlled by space and pace small ball lineups, the Wolves have conversely forced opponents to match a transformative style of basketball. Minnesota has stunningly catapulted to the top of the NBA hierarchy with a starting lineup that in revolutionary fashion features two seven-footers with Townsend Gobert while also having a 7-3 wingspan and 6'9", 264-pounder of a sixth man with Nas Reed, which allows Minnesota to play a massive amount of tall ball. Currently the toughest team to score on, given having the league's best team defense is the driving factor to the Wolves breaking out, you have to give credit to the anchor. Top 5 center Rudy Gobert is ranked number 1 among all players by a mile in defensive writing. His 104.3 mark in this crucial advanced stat is a full 3.8 points more than the second ranked Jarrett Allen, a larger gap between the second ranked Jarrett Allen and the 15th ranked Alperin Sengun. That fact proves the Stifle Tower in Gobert is the most dominant defender on the planet, at least on paper. Gobert's anchoring this Twin City defense at such an astonishingly top-notch level, to the point where his numbers paint the picture of a defender that's in a class of quite literally his very own. A recent game against the Clippers, who have what's the third highest offensive rating in a season of all time, showed off the help defense of the T-Wolves 1-5, through five, fueled by the backline reach and positioning of Gobert that had the Clippers rattled. This possession says it all about the Wolves' defensive identity, as well as committed effort level. Conley's on-ball pressure funnels Kawhi into the second line of defense in the imposing combo of McDaniels and Gobert. Even after Kawhi splits two defenders and laces an elite wraparound pass to Mann, watch how the recently signed Monte Morris lays everything out on the line to get back for the chase down block. The ball then deflects to Zubats, who Gobert's right there to track, time up, and reject at the basket. That's a beastly multi-effort lay it out on the line championship type sequence. Whichever team you're a fan of, you have to respect that hustle. That play also showed you Minnesota's elite positioning. In that February 12th game against the number 3 seeded Clippers, Gobert finished with a game most by over 3 times more than any other player on the night 4 blocks, and when he's in a flow, no matter the type of lineup he goes up against, big, small, 3 point shooting, etc, Gobert's timing defensively in both his lower body footwork and upper body abduction, leading to exceptional block accuracy, provided make or break basket preservation that allowed the NBA's best defense to hold what's been an all time efficient Clipper off offense to its third lowest point total of the 23-24 season at 101 points. For the year as a whole, Gobert's presence on the glass cannot be overlooked. He's only trailing DeMontis Sabonis this season in terms of total rebounds. Always one of the game's best board getters like he should be given his 7-1-258 stature, along with reach, hands, and athleticism, Gobert won a rebounding title in the 21-22 campaign. He's also second, coincidentally again only behind Sabonis, in screen assists. So he's opening up room for his team's creators to go to work better than almost any other player, which couldn't have been glossed over in this assessment of Gobert's overall impact. This all makes this man Rudy a massive all-star snub, but we all know it's all NBA and all defensive teams that mean much more to a player's legacy nowadays. Teams in 2024, Gobert is going to be on. He's the current favorite to win the DPOY again, an award that would tie him with Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo for the most defensive player of the year wins of all time. While Gobert is the best paint protector on the planet and an all-time great defender, he's making just 64.5% of his free throws. Three months ago in November in a signature matchup, this bad free throw shooting nearly killed the Wolves' chances against the team with the best record in the NBA right now, the 17-time world championship winning Boston Celtics. 
Gobert would shoot just 2 for 11 from the charity stripe in this matchup. The reason I even bring this up is despite those 9 missed free throws from Gobert, and on top of that, not a single player for Wolves coach Chris Finch scoring more than 20 points individually, the Timberwolves showed us their identity to win as a team with hard-nosed on a string defense, something they hope to implement as a new school winning method in the era of offense. Despite facing all that aforementioned adversity while battling what's currently the team with the highest offensive rating in the 77-year history of the NBA within a season, the Wolves dug down to pull off what's to this date in addition to the much more recent win against the Clippers we covered before, one of their best wins of 2023-24. That early season grinded out thriller showed us what this Wolves roster was all about. Gobert needs to shoot better than just 2 for 11 from the line of course, but the former Jazz was a game high by far plus 24, and he also came through on the glass by rightfully based off his monstrous 7-9 wingspan, leading the game with 12 rebounds while also leading the game in field goal percentage. His springy dunking so bear against Leonard up under the punch. Combined with the fact that his 95 overall rated hands allow him to gather passes and finish nicely offensively, plus reject and simultaneously control shots on the other end, make what Gobert brings to the table overwhelming for any given opposing center. But don't forget about the receipts. When initially trading for Gobert, the Timberwolves were labeled as extremely stupid by a massive wide range of skeptics for giving up four future first round picks for a second starting caliber center to pair next to the already interchangeable all-star up front, Carl Anthony Towns. The trade for Gobert came a year before the Nuggets won the 2023 title. Reason this is relevant is because Denver's championship core was architected by now Timberwolves GM Tim Connolly. Critics of what the Wolves gave up in the Gobert blockbuster failed to acknowledge that the architect for the Nuggets winning era was picked up by the Timberwolves less than two months before the Gobert trade. Connolly had a clear direction for where he wanted to take Minnesota. With at the time of the Gobert trade, the three-point shooting small ball table setting Warriors having won half of the available championships over an eight-year span, a franchise needed to shake things up and play their own brand of adjustment and forcing basketball. What was impossible for heavy skeptics of the Gobert deal to see at the time is that Minnesota was, when making the trade and is into the future, in tremendous hands with a team president highly responsible for the most recent winners of the Larry O'Brien Trophy. President Connolly just extended veteran locker room leader and still solid wily point guard Mike Connolly, signing him to a two-year $22 million contract, which is a bargain for what the one-time All-Star and All-Defensive Team 36-year-old still has left in the tank. To what's already been a stellar career based around classiness, consistency, and at his best, stardom, Connolly looks to add NBA champion to his resume in a few months. From a management perspective, locking Conley down for the next two years was just the right length of a contract and for a cap hit of 11 mil, again, it's a steal for Tim and the mini front office. Given Ant and Cat are the elite one-two punch that were rightfully all-stars, I'm giving both Gobert and Conley the label as Minnesota's most underrated players. The plus-minus stat reflects that assessment as sandwiching Carl Anthony Towns, Gobert ranks ahead of Cat with the second highest added value for Minnesota, while Conley ranks just behind Cat with the fourth highest added value for Minnesota. Sharpshooting rebounder Nas Reed is one of the team's most important players. Reed is second in the association in three-pointers made by a big man off the bench, and in addition to spacing the floor out, he can do a little bit of everything. The defensive positioning from Nas is above average, and he seamlessly covers ground with his effort level and size. These traits for Nas are specifically beneficial in the pick and roll, as he's great at defending multiple pick and roll coverages, whether it's hedging or either high slash low drop coverage. Also, Reed's ability to switch on to smaller attackers out of pick and rolls allows him to make tall ball lineups effective, making Minnesota not just a top tier team, but an easy one to root for, you could argue it's the elite bench sellies, you could argue it's the fact that they're tearing through the association no matter where they're tasked with performing, leading the NBA with the best record on the road, you could argue it's the development of number one option Anthony Edwards into a superstar, or how deep this Wolves team is stacked with depth, featuring weapons surrounding the big three of Ant, Cat, and Rudy, like Jaden McDaniels, Nas Reed, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Mike Conley, Kyle Anderson, and Monte Morris. 
but most intriguing in my opinion for this Wolves team is their defensive identity. In the era of bucket getting, it's refreshing to see a team base their style of play around grittiness, defensive fundamentals, and sound defensive game planning. Minnesota's been exceptional at holding the opposing team's top player in check, which is due to their well-timed in-game defensive adjustments from their coaching staff. In their recent matchup with the Clippers, the Timberwolves held Leonard, George, Harden, and Westbrook to a combined 21 for 67 field goals made, equating to just 31.3% shooting. Chris Finch tends to aggressively mix up his game plan in the pick and roll, and to the credit of his versatile bigs, they've been able to swiftly cover ground no matter the coverage. Individual attention to detail in terms of playing on a string, in addition to trusting their elite defenders to lock down their individual matchups, and then on another note, providing the right amount of help defense without overhelping is what's all allowed the Wolves to collectively take such a massive leap forward from last season on defense and, in turn, the standings. Jaden McDaniels is a valuable isolation defender on the perimeter that forms a pair with Gobert on the back side, which is overwhelming for attackers. When Jaden's guarding one-on-ones, the four other teammates around McDaniels can in most cases feel comfortable in letting him defend individually, allowing them to instead of helping one or two passes away and getting caught out of position, disrupt the passing lanes. Last season, skeptics were chalking up Minnesota's struggles to their personnel not being able to fit in with the space and pace small ball ways of the modern NBA. It turned out the struggles were less about the Wolves not being able to play fast and more about them not giving second efforts. The 2024 Timberwolves have made the adjustment for good and have built up completely new habits defensively, thanks to top-notch head coaching from Finch and a collective buy-in, starting with this team's top players, and most importantly their defensive anchor in the phenom from France, Rudy Gobert. It's defense to me, when you factor in all the statistically all-time great offenses they're tasked with stopping on a nightly basis, but I want to know the most refreshing part about the Wolves in your opinion, feel free to build off my take and add upon it, or of course leave your own thoughts for a chance at next video shout out, your boy DFlow signing off.